<laughs> Clan Skrull is one of the four great Skaven clans. Its specialty is the horrible combination of arcane sorcery with mad science and engineering to create some of the greatest and most diabolical war machines to have ever graced the tunnels of the great Under Empire. Its members, known as Warlock Engineers, are both inventors and magicians alike, whose expertise aids the manufacturing of all kinds of war machines and weaponry for the use of those willing to pay. Many of them are full-fledged wizards themselves, capable of manipulating the winds of magic to cast spells on their own, but their most potent of weapons lies in their use of their own deadly weaponry. From their warp forge workshops underneath the great swampland capital of Skaven Blight, these Tinker Rats have produced a vast arsenal of terrifying weapons in their long and glorious history, which includes the invention of the deadly poisoned wind, the warp fire thrower, and the warp lock jazail. Clan Skrae is thought by many as arguably the most influential and powerful of the great clans, due to their clan having the largest arsenal of weapons in the entire Under Empire that can rival that of any other human nation in the world. The clan is also fairly wealthy from their exploits of renting out their powerful machines and special expertise to the highest bidder, being almost as rich as their brethren within Clan Mulder. Along with that, their leader, Lord Warlock Morskitar, is the second most influential member within the council chamber, occupying the twelve seat of the table. Skry's most powerful engineers meld sorcery and science until the two are indivisible. These individuals are called warlock engineers, and they are more akin to walking arsenals than to Skaven. Warp energies crackles from the blade that emerge from the flesh of their arms, and their rat-like bodies are covered in all manner of bizarre artifice. Tubes and wires pulse and buzz with unholy life as they connect the engineer to his harness and its fantastic apparatus. Fearful and horrible indeed is Cryer's technology, if it allows such an unholy alliance of flesh and machine. From Stefan Paulus Adelhoff, a scholar of Wolfenburg. Clan Skrier holds sway in Skaven Blight, a teeming Skaven metropolis considered by many to be the capital of the Under Empire. Access to the city's plentiful veins of warp stone allows the clan to expand upon the technologies for which they are renowned. The city reflects the nature of its scryer masters, being atypically modern when compared to most other Skaven settlements. Without a doubt, Skryer is the wealthiest and most powerful of all the great clans. 
The clan's strength rests on artifice and sorcery in equal measures. Much of their technology is geared towards war, mixing equal amounts of magic and warpstone to create weapons unparalleled anywhere in the old world. Fortunately for clan Scryer's foes, their weapons are often as dangerous to the Skaven as they are to their targets. Because weapons are Scryer's stock in trade, the clan's other mechanical feats are easily overlooked. Scryer succeeded in creating many exciting devices, from the Warp Rail, connecting one end of the Under Empire to the other, to the Far Squeaker, a device allowing instant communication between Skaven over great distances. Indeed, much of the Under Empire's mining is accomplished by way of Scryer's manufactured earth movers and rock drills. The clan's warlock engineers are constantly researching new technologies. Skryer's experiments are just as likely to succeed as they are to fail, however, often with catastrophic results. The warlock engineers feel that such failures are to be expected, especially those riding on the cutting edge of technology. The number of laborers, mechanics, and engineers that die as a result of this research is irrelevant when compared to the value of a successful experiment. By supplying the Council of Thirteen with INFERNAL machines, Clan Scryer ensures its own position of power within the Under Empire. Each member of the Council is well aware of Scryer's value, and the Clan will never allow them to forget it. New inventions and devices of war are constantly demonstrated to the Lords of Decay, and the most promising of these receive funding from the rest of the Great and Lesser Clans. Many victories have been achieved by the deeds of the Warlock Engineers and their lackeys, who were, in turn, supported by the inventions of Clan Skrar. Other less destructive devices are also put to use in the name of the Skaven people as a whole. The Far Squeaker, for example, allows the Council to communicate with its agents in the field. In addition, Scryer maintains the Warp Rail, a system of tracks and warp-powered transport cars allowing fast subterranean transport of troops and equipment. The powerful machines that are used to mine tunnels and move rocks and soil away from the Under Empire's byways are also Scryer's designs. So long as Clan Scryer continues to supply the Under Empire with valuable services and somewhat reliable weaponry, it shall remain the most powerful of the great Skaven clans. Whatever the truth of the canon, it is clear that Skaven weapon technology is far, far beyond that of the Empire, and even beyond that of the Dwarves. The sole mercy of this is that they still lack much attention to craftsmanship, and these terrifying weapons are extremely unreliable. In a sweet irony, they often do more damage to their ratmen wielders than they do to their enemies. From Amelie Meyer, a priestess of Verena.
from 2522. Clan Scryer utilizes its technological superiority to great advantage on the battlefield. Though Clan Scryer relies on Clan Rats to shoulder much of the military burden, their warriors are far better equipped than typical Clan Rats of other lesser clans, and their weapons are capable of DESTRUCTION ON A MASSIVE SCALE. Heavy weapon teams use rattling guns and warp fire throwers, while the better trained clan rats are equipped with warp lock pistols. Enemies are softened up by poison wind globadiers, specially trained skaven who fling poison gas filled glass spheres into the ranks of their foes. Skaven snipers are set up away from the front lines with their warp lock gisels, where they pick off important targets at will. Closer to the rear of Skrar formations sit large cannons that are capable of launching bolts of destructive warp lightning. Serviced by numerous technicians and engineers, warp lightning cannons are prone to exploding if they are improperly maintained. Like all other Skaven clans, Skryer is willing to make great sacrifices if it means that they will achieve ultimate victory over their enemies. Firing a warp lightning cannon or rattling gun through their own troops in order to destroy a powerful enemy or weapon is perfectly acceptable to Skryer warlords. And now, on to Clan Scryer's devilish weapons and units. First up, the Poisoned Wind Glow Butter. Clan Scryer fields troops that lob balls of poison into the ranks of their enemies. Those who succumb to these choking clouds die writhing upon the ground, drowning in their own bloody froth. Few who witness their assaults are unmoved by them, for their outlandish costumes and gas masks set the globe deers apart from other skaven. They are not merely enraged vermin who swing swords. Instead, these faceless automatons are feared, merciless killers. From Stefan Paulus Adelhoff, a scholar of Wolfenburg. Poisoned wind globe deers are a class of clan scryer weapon specialists that are trained in the use of chemical warfare. The weapons of clan scryer are as limitless in their scope as they are dreadful in their menace. Some of the most Horrifying are those that kill many enemies with only a little effort. The poison wind globes are one such weapon, and they are dispensed by an elite core called the Globadiers. The Globadiers are trained in the uses of poisons, much like Eshin assassins. Unlike the adepts of Clan Eshin, these Skaven instead focus their training upon toxins that can kill many enemies at once. 
The vapours that swim within poison wind globes are carried on the fickle winds of the battlefield and into the lungs of the enemy and sometimes into those of allies as well. Poisoned wind globes are crafted out of glass or crystal orbs filled with noxious warpstone gas. When thrown, the sphere shatters, releasing billowing clouds so lethal that mere skin contact can cause severe pain. To breathe the gases would mean imminent and painful death by means of suffocation. For this reason, Globideers wear unique protective gear which allows them to breathe these and other poisonous fumes without ill effect. Not only do the gas masks protect the Globideers, but they lend each one a menacing appearance. The delicate fingers of poison mist that drift across the butterfields of my brothers are birthed from the spheres that scryers Globideers fling. The fumes float with deadly beauty, seeking the lungs of our foes. Taking root within the enemy, the poison turns their breath into blood froth. <laughs> and death, death soon follows. From Skrilin Thurntik, a grey seer. On the battlefield, small teams of poisoned wind globe deers would lurk between allied formations before awaiting the perfect time to let loose their cargo. At times, globe deers are also accompanied by a poisoned wind mortar to boost their firepower tenfold. These rat men are used in battle to decimate tight and heavily defended enemy formations. When the opportunity arises, these rat men would dash forward and let loose their weapons before darting back behind the safety of their comrades. Once their poisoned cargo has been unleashed, they draw their blades and wade into the mass of their writhing victims to cut the throats of those who still claim some semblance of life. Without any gear to protect themselves from the fumes, both enemy and allies alike would die in a matter of seconds. Next, the Death Globe Bombardiers. Death Globe Bombardiers are a deadlier variant of the more common poisoned wind globe deers. Death globes are glass or crystal orbs filled with deadly warpstone gas like poisoned wind globes but far more potent. When thrown, the sphere shatters, releasing billowing clouds so lethal that mere skin contact can cause severe pain or even death. Breathing the vapours causes lungs to spontaneously fill with bubbling pus, a horrible and nearly instantaneous death. For this reason, Bombardiers wear all manner of elaborate masks, goggles and cumbersome rebreathing apparatus in an effort to protect themselves against accidental gassing. Armour offers no protection against poison gas, 
But this does not stop the bombardiers from wearing arcane body armor underneath their robes. Next, the warp fire through Even more terrifying than warp stone bullets are the weapons that throw warp fire. A kind of burning, flaming ooze that sticks to the skin with all the same properties of the stone from which it is made. Like the warp stone bullets of their rifles and pistols, this ooze melts the skin and mutates flesh, leaving its victims deformed or crippled in moments. I have heard legends of huge cannons which shoot the same stuff only in massive volumes, enough to drench an entire squadron with this lethal chemical. I do not know if this is true. I pray it is still a myth. From Amelie Meyer, a priestess of Verena. Warp fire throwers are one of the deadliest weapons within the arsenal of Clan Skrar. A weapon so powerful and dangerous that it is considered the hallmark of Clan Skrar ingenuity. The warp fire thrower is a crude yet highly volatile flamethrower that hurls a blast of concentrated warp fire upon an enemy or a small area of ground. Warp fire throwers are almost always grouped into weapon teams of two skaven. One would carry a bulky and highly unstable fuel tank filled with chemicals mixed with powdered warp stone, while another would aim the weapon at the enemy. With a single flick of a switch, the weapon would unleash a torrent of fuel that ignites into a greenish flame. Once the blast hits any solid object, the warp stone imbued flame that the weapon spews forth would literally stick to almost any surface. Nearly nothing can douse the flames of a warp fire thrower once it has engulfed its intended victim. However, just like any other piece of machinery that the Skaven have invented, Warp fire throwers are known throughout the Under Empire for its volatility. Being of a crude design, the weapon is legendary for misfiring or malfunctioning at an extraordinary rate, causing teams of warp fire throwers to explode in a magnificent display of destruction that would kill the team and those Skaven foolish enough to stand near them. Nevertheless, the potency of the weapon often outweighs the risk it often harbors, at least in the mind of a Skaven. When warp fire throwers are hired out to aid the warlord clans in battle, each team is typically attached to a block of clan rat infantry. The purpose of these pyromaniacs are to provide the frontline soldiers with the firepower they need to punch through heavily fortified enemy positions. Should the clan rats fail to break the enemy lines, it is up to the warp fire throwers to break it open. The warp fire thrower is whispered of in many quarters, chiefly for the horrors it has wrought in the crammed confines of dwarf holes. Though little more than a vat of unstable warp fuel and an ignition source, it is a weapon to be feared, 
as many charred skeletons would perhaps attest, could they speak of it. With the smouldering projector aimed, the simple flip of a switch births roiling clouds of warp fire that scours all from the gunner's path. Though the warp fire thrower is frequently seen wielded by weapon teams of two skaven, particularly deranged gunners, nicknamed fire rats, have been known to take to the field without the aid of a fuel bearer. Often members of the black furred elite, these rat men readily trade the additional burden for the chance to deny another skaven a share of the glory. And next, the rattling gun. The rattling gun is the latest and perhaps most powerful weaponry Clan Skra has ever invented. A large, multi-barreled, death-dealing machine that has the potential to change the very face of warfare in favor of the Skaven race. Though a relatively new design and of highly questionable reliability, the Rattling Gun has nonetheless proven itself so successful that Clan Skrier simply cannot make enough to satisfy the greedy demands of the Warlord Clans. Powered by warp steam and kicked into gear by the prodigious working of a hand crank, the six-barreled rattling gun would begin to spin before it unleashes its payload of warp stone bullets. As is typical of Clan Skrier work, there is a large diversity of different design patterns, including a wheeled variant, one with a small shield, a tripod mounted version, and much, much more. In any case, the rattling gun is just as equally deadly, no matter the design, but also just as likely to malfunction or overheat like any other clan scryer weaponry. As is common amongst weapon teams, the rattling gun requires two skaven. One to hold and crank the warp steam while another aims the gun forward. In combat, the rattling gun is capable of laying down an ungodly amount of firepower in an extremely short period of time. A solid barrage from a rattling gun is more than capable of single-handedly scything down a mob of charging orc boar boys or take down a monstrous griffon in mid-flight. Few can stop a rattling gun once its gung-ho weapons team gets in gear. As with other Skaven weapon teams, rattling guns are usually deployed as a support weapon for the wave attacks of the clan rats, a situation that is as beneficial as it is terrifying for them. Skaven chiefs will happily order the gunners to fire into the engaged clan rats if it serves the purpose of killing the enemy, something that the clan rats are all too aware of. The rapid-fire guns are also prone to misfiring or otherwise malfunctioning with unnerving frequency, sometimes with spectacularly disastrous results. Although this fearsome weapon of unparalleled rate of fire is normally operated by a weapons team, a version exists that seems to be of a lighter experimental type, capable of being moved and fired by a single skaven, 
of the one of the black furred elite. It sacrifices the amount of ammunition it can use in order to be more portable. Encumbered by the weight and unwieldiness of the weapon, the rattling gunner is far from quick on his feet. But once he cranks up his weapon and opens fire, warp stone laced hell is unleashed. Single minded and persistent, the rattling gunner will pick a target and then continually track it, firing relentlessly until either the weapon jams, needs to reload, or his opponent lays dead and treaded. Beyond recognition. The Rattling Gunner won't let a small fact like clan rats or skaven slaves blocking his line of fire stop him. If an opponent can keep their wits about them, they can make the Rattling Gunner callously mow down his kin whilst dodging from cover to cover. However, they must be sure to not get caught in the open, or face a rapid-fire death in a hail of warp-stone gunfire. The Poisoned Wind More Tar the Poisoned Wind Mortar is a form of light artillery that allows a small team of globe deers to lob a much larger payload of Poisoned Wind Globes at a much greater range than a lone globe deer could ever hope to achieve. This two-skaven team requires one of its members to strap on the mortar upon his back, while a second skaven would load the ammunition inside the mortar itself. Additionally, with some hastily squealed directions, a team of poisoned wind mortar has the ability to fire their weapon on the go or fire indirectly at the enemy. Such a situation where hurting the enemy without risking their own lives has always been an appealing idea to any skaven. When in combat, as the bulk of the firing apparatus can be strapped upon a crew member's back, the weapons teams can advance and catch up alongside Skaven infantry blocks, pausing momentarily to lob high arching shots onto distant targets, before scurrying forward to keep up with the rest of the army. <coughs> The Warp Grinder Warp Grinders are a smaller and more portable version of a much larger drilling machine first devised by Clan Scryer as a means to tunnel far more quickly than a horde of slaves could ever hope to achieve. Some of these massive constructs are larger than the grandest ships of the Empire's navy. These huge devices combine great drills with warp energies to vaporize the broken debris as the machine bores. These rare machines are seldom, if ever, seen, but a portable version can be often found on the battlefield. The more portable warp grinder opens up tunnels. Projectors gleam with warp energy, pulverizing stone, and leaving a narrow and smoking passageway in its wake. Small, fast-moving units can follow the device, emerging behind enemy lines to cause untold disruption. But it is a perilous trip, as the newly bored tunnels are prone to cave-ins and the machines can suffer 
catastrophic meltdowns. When the warp grinder breaks through the surface, it will stick with the unit it is attached to, even assisting in close combat. Without the comforting presence of the parent unit, the weapon team will flee the battlefield. The warp lock, Giselle. Such weaponry! Great muskets with barrels longer than the rat men who use them, each fitted with a glass eye to magnify their victims and ensure a killing shot. Pouches of refined gunpowder, little rat skin bags filled with bullets crafted from shards of warp stone. Grimy little scaven slaves bearing metal crooks upon which to rest the muzzle of each chisel and ensure the steadiness of the shot. From Ricketts Snap Fang, the warlord of Bone Stag. Warblock Gisales are specialized teams of marksmen that bear weaponry of the same name. The weapons that Gisales are named after are long barreled muskets that require a team of two Skaven to fire and reload. This is because the rifle the marksmen team uses is extraordinarily long, aided by its tremendous length. A warplock Gisel is capable of hitting targets at a distance greater than conventional bows or black powder firearms. Once the rifle is fired, the weapon unleashes a single bullet made entirely of refined toxic warpstone, at such velocity that it strikes with a force capable of penetrating through even the thickest of armors. Although moving too quickly to be seen, the bullets fired by a warp lock Gisel leave behind a faint green vapor trail. This generally exposes the weapons team to enemy fire. For this reason, what started out as a mere aiming platform for the long barreled rifle has turned into a protective pavis shield designed to shield the vulnerable Giselle team from retaliatory arrows, bolts, and bullets. The Warplock Giselle is unmistakably a specialized weapons team, but unlike the other clan Skrae portable weaponry, the warp lock Gisales are not generally attached to a block of infantry, but rather operate as their own independent unit. This allows the Gisale teams to become a valuable asset to any warlord's army, who will often try to position these marksmen at high vantage points such as hills, cliffs or buildings to afford them the greatest possible line of sight. Once in position, a team of Gisales has the ability to pick off highly valuable enemy targets from a very safe distance. And next, the Warp Lightning Cannon. The Warp Lightning Cannon is the very pinnacle of Skaven ingenuity, a marvel of both magical and scientific engineering crafted by the ingenious warlock engineers of Clan Skra. This engine of mass destruction is a machine that generates an amazing amount of energy that concentrates into a single blast of pure warp lightning. The lightning itself is generated within a reinforced sphere located at the back of the cannon, and once enough energy is charged when fired, 
The warp lightning cannon flings the energy through its rune-etched barrel, forged and enchanted to channel the cannon's destructive fury. When fired, the warp lightning cannon emits a sizzling aura of warp energy and anyone near the shot is rocked in its wake. First standing on end with a sickly green light burned into their eyes. Once unleashed, the energy arcs earthwards, punching through any obstacles in its path before erupting in a crackling cloud of pure warp lightning. The shot flashes too quickly to follow, but its trail, once it lands on the ground, is easily marked by a greenish vapour. Nevertheless, due to the cannon's crude design and poor manufacturing, the weapon is just as unreliable as it is powerful, having been known to blow up in a spectacular fireball should the energy within the machine not be properly contained. <coughs> The Doom Wheel is a large and massively powerful war machine that is said to sum up the sheer inhuman ingenuity of the Skaven, and most importantly, the genius of Clan Skrire. At first sight, the Doom Wheel might seem an oddity, perhaps even comical to opponents that have not faced one before. The dwarves, who have suffered many wars against the Skaven, know full well the Doom Wheel's measure and will direct every war machine at their disposal to blast the deadly wheel apart before it can churn close enough to pulverize the dwarf battle lines. Indeed, dwarf cannon crews will allow themselves to be overrun by the foe, willingly sacrificing themselves for their hold in order to get off a single shot at the infernal Skaven device. The design is so simple and yet so complex, so utterly Skaven in its inception, that it is well beyond the keen of even the top minds of the Imperial School of Engineers in Nuln to comprehend. The rats scampering around inside the Doom Wheel's enormous treadmills provide the primary motive power. This, in turn, sparks the Warp Stone Generator, which, if all goes well, powers bolts of lethal warp lightning. If the green or purplish bolts that arc out from the warp conduits do not slay the foe, then it will be up to the great iron reinforced wheel to crush all who dare to stand before its creaking but mighty track. At the center of the contraption sits a warlock engineer who pilots the mad creation. Sitting inside the mighty death dealing, Artifice of destruction puffs the warlock engineer so full of bold reassurance that the otherwise dubious courage of his race is, at least partially, offset. Doubtlessly, the rafting fumes of the warp stone generator bolster the engineer's confidence as well. Within Skaven military tactics, the Doom Wheel is the ultimate line breaker. The rats inside the wheel are fed stimulant drugs before the battle and driven into an insane frenzy by the lightning flashing and sparking around them. 
as they tumble over each other, the wheel rumbles forward. But the doom wheel's speed is impossible to control accurately. Sometimes it will roll along more swiftly than a galloping horse. At other times it will virtually halt because the rats are temporarily exhausted. Though it can be said that the Wolfstone reactor is somewhat unstable and the speed generated by the rats is rather erratic, a series of tests using slave units as targets has yielded impressive results. Now the Clan Scryer Warlock Engineers are building this new wonder weapon as fast as possible. The Doom Wheel was invented by perhaps the most insanely talented of all Warlock Engineers, the mad genius Ikit Claw the infamous Chief Warlock of Clan Scryer. The Chief Warlock is obsessed with creating the ultimate killing machine, determined one day to outdo his predecessors who enjoyed the easy successes of warp fire throwers, Gisales, screaming bells, and the rest. By harnessing the power of War Warp Stone to create energy discharges, Igid Claw has created a terrifying engine of destruction that rolls forward surrounded by a crackling halo of purple warp lightning. Anything foolish enough to hold its ground before this infernal machine is blasted apart by the warp lightning or crushed under the doom wheel itself. And now, Clan Scryer, Lords. First up, the Warlock Master. Warlock Masters are experienced Warlock Engineers that have achieved a higher rank in Clan Scryer hierarchy. Acting as the former's bosses, they supervise their experiments and, should the opportunity arise, steal the credit for their accomplishments as any Skaven would. The Warlock Engineers of Clan Scryer are perhaps the most ingenious minds in all of Skavendom. Insane, diabolical scientists who combine arcane sorcery with mad science to create some of the greatest technological marvels of mayhemic destruction. They are the artificers of Skaven society, producing black market weaponry for any able to pay for it. Under the ever watchful eyes of their warlock masters, whose role it is to oversee and, well, steal any credit that may be due to an inventive warlock engineer. They combine well-known weapons with heavy armor to make highly experimental devices which do not always function flawlessly. Many have met their doom as a result of an exploding war power accumulator. Warlock engineers are the pinnacle of Skaven technomancy. They combine well-known weapons such as warp blades with heavy armor and experimental devices. Each engineer equips his own harness with the devices that he prefers. These machinations do not always function flawlessly, however, and many Warlock engineers have met their doom as the result of an exploding warp power accumulator. With their goggles, harnesses that seemingly beep, whir and click of their own accord, and the warp blades that protrude from the flesh of their arms, 
warlock engineers are an intimidating sight. Individually, they are capable of decimating entire enemy columns with a few short bursts of highly focused warp energy. So long as their technological components function normally, they bring terror and death to any battle or skirmish in which they participate. The notorious warlock engineers of Clan Skryer are the artificers of Skaven society, blending arcane sorceries with technology in an insane and mind-boggling mix. For the other races of the world, it is hard to differentiate or define where the science stops and the power of magic begins, although such delineation never occurs to Skaven. Warlock engineers see the two elements as one and the same, machines and sorcery blended together to create impressive killing power. On the battlefield, it is readily apparent that some of the warlock engineers are able to channel and cast magic in the traditional ways understood by the erasers of the world. They harness the energies of the winds of magic and channel it to foul skaven effects. Whether or not this is done with the aid of warped machinery is unknown. Although they can cast and counter magic, the warlock engineers are not nearly as adept at sorcery as the horned grey seers. Some warlock engineers are unable to cast spells at all, but instead seem wholly absorbed with the building and firing of a variety of mechanical weapons capable of dangerous and unpredictable effects. Warlock engineers appear as other Skaven, but it is invariably harder to discern their shapes as they are typically covered in whirling, hissing, clanking contraptions of their own devising. The normally twitchy Skaven energy is partially confined due to the number of wires and attachments that trail behind the clan Skryer Ratmen. There is a frightening tendency towards body part replacement amongst many warlock engineers. This is partly due to limb loss from explosive mechanical mishaps, but disturbingly much of it is by choice. The endlessly tinkering engineers are always assured they can build a better one. And so, eyes, limbs, and more are gleefully replaced with cog-driven mechanical parts. At the heart of most warlock engineer upgrades is the driving force behind all Skavendom, the dreaded Warp Stone. The green-black luminescent stuff is used as a power source, providing potent chaotic energies to many strange and diabolical devices. The sorcerer inventors often go to war carrying many of the latest devices. This seems to be true for both the sorcerer rats that can cast magic and those that function along the more traditional engineer role. From handled weapons such as warp lock muskets or poisoned wind globes of devastating potency, Two blades powered by crackling warp stone energies, the anarchic arsenal of the warlock engineers is both varied and destructive. Marching to war with magical machinations, outrageous and heretical, but most of all, deadly. Each individual warlock engineer is a walking arsenal in his own right, a weapon every bit as deadly as the Giselle, Poisoned Wind Globe, Warp Fire Thrower, or the Rattling Gun. Menacing and unearthly figures, 
Warlock engineers wear a harness covered in all manner of gorges, tubing, eye pieces, antennae, dials, and other bizarre devices whose different functions can hardly be guessed at until the engineer lifts the strange blade-like devices they all bear either set at the end of a polearm, or fused to the flesh of their arms. Abruptly, the harness comes alive, humming with the power of unknown mechanisms as the gorges flicker and coruscating eldritch energies play across its surface. Energies that are suddenly unleashed from the Warlock Engineer's blades as bolts of vivid lightning capable of reducing their victims to charred cinders. And now, finally, the Clan Scryer, legendary Lord. Urkit Claw. Tell say that Ikit Claw, Chief Warlock of Clan Scryer, Master of the Warp Storm, Flayer of Forge Master, Garak Blood Tongue, Butcher of Chikamakatar, Gutter of Yar Alfhild, Demon Kin, Burner of Magista Klaus, Von Denhoff, and Razor of Helvigstad, and. From Chief Warlock Ikid Claw, as he presents his unnecessarily long and seemingly exaggerated list of names and titles. Ikid Claw, Chief Warlock Engineer of Clan Skrar, is one of the most ambitious and talented warlock engineers of his age, and the infamous right fang of Lord Morskitar, the one true ruler of Clan Skrar. Ikid Crow has taken Clan Skra's mix of science and sorcery to new levels of complexity and depravity. Entire legions of Skaven slaves have been blasted to bits in the name of Ikid's experimental new weapons. A small price to pay for the sheer power and killing might that Ikid has added to Clan Scryer's deadly arsenal. In his quest for knowledge, Ikid has travelled the world, stealing secrets from the mystics of Cathay, studying the dimension-spanning machines of Lustria, and toiling for years alongside the cruel forge masters of far-off Zarnagrund. Upon his return, Ikid found the warp forges of Clan Skryer woefully underdeveloped. It would take centuries to fully implement his grandiose changes. It was during the Great Civil War that Ikid seized his opportunity. As the newly assigned lead emissary of Lord Morskitar, the ruler of Clan Skryer, Ikid Claw ordered massive warp forges and unrivaled armories to be gnawed into the stone beneath Skavenblight. Infernal devices and diabolical weapons were soon being assembled on a level never before seen. Should nothing stop this mad Tinker Rat from continuing on his research, he may create a weapon so powerful and diabolical that it could threaten the very world to total annihilation. This fight, Frey, is done over. 
Squick swear to serve me or join that full meat in death. Ikid Claw now commands this expedition. From Chief Warlock Ikid Claw, taking command of the Bone Stash Expedition. Ikid Claw is one of the most powerful sorcerers in the old world, and he has dedicated his long life to the study of all forms of magic and science, including the spells and technology of men, elves, and dwarves. Over the decades prior to the Second Skaven Civil War, Ikid Claw travelled secretly to the far-flung corners of the Under Empire. He visited distant Cathay to steal secrets from the ancient human mystics, and he rifled the buried vaults of Vorshgar in the northern wastes of Nagaroth. He risked the wrath of Clan Pestilence by journeying through the steaming jungles of Lustria and visiting the monolithic ruins which have stood there since the beginning of time. From his great journeying, Ikid Claw drew together an encyclopedic knowledge of the spells of the civilized races. When he returned to Skaven Blight, Ikid Claw found his master and the other Lords of Decay teetering on the brink of civil war after the failure of Clan Pestilence's Red Pox in Britonia. Lord Morskitar had withdrawn to the Clan Scryer quarter of Skaven Blight and was waiting for the inevitable collapse. Naked Claw hastened to his side and stood ready. Sure enough, Clan Pestilence made an attempt to seize the council chamber and fighting spilled over into Skaven Blight. When the time was ripe, Lord Mosquitar sent Ikid Claw to lead the Warlock Engineers to the temple, ostensibly to restore order. Ikid Claw's spells were unstoppable, and he swept the temple precincts clear of the battling factions with fiery blasts and hails of dark blades. Clan Skryer seized the temple in an unshakable grip, and Lord Morskitar emerged to declare himself ruler of Skaven Blight. However, by this time, internecine fighting had spread throughout the Under Empire, and no one was listening to even the mighty Lords of Decay anymore. Lord Morskitar ruled most of Skaven Blight for several centuries, driving out the other clans from the lower tunnels and the other quarters of the city. Ikid Claw was his most trusted servant during this time, overseeing the great works of science and sorcery which Lord Morskitar set into motion. It was from these great experiments that Ikid Claw sensed the rising tide of dark magic that preceded the great chaos incursion before anyone else in the Under Empire. And so it was that Lord Morskitar was prepared when the Grey Seers declared their intention to invoke the Horned Rat and end the war. The Doom Sphere I saw the thing with my own eyes. A great orb of steel the size of a steam ship, and packed with raw word stone. Naked Claw constructed his word stone bomb over a fold running beneath Karak Azul. If he'd been able to unleash the power of his weapon, he could have precipitated an earthquake, the likes of which no dwarf has seen since the time of woes. 
from Clorock Bronze Hammer, describing Igard Claw's terrible doom sphere. As Igard Claw continues his diabolical pursuit to create more murderous weapons of mass destruction. The foolish Tinker Rat had unexpectedly created the first ever atomic bomb, a weapon the likes of which could literally see the entire world engulfed in nuclear fire. His first attempts of creating this infamous doom sphere was when he raided the halls of Krakadrak, hoping to take many of the hall's engineers as slaves. Yet the valiant efforts of master engineer Kladak Bronze Hammer, Ikid's progress has slowed considerably. Yet it was upon the caves beneath Karak Azul that his first true prototype of the Doom Sphere was finally created. But Kalarak once more came and disrupted his efforts. In desperation, the foolish Tinkerat activated the machine, but its imperfect design saw the machine break apart and explode, though not as magnificently as it was designed to. Ikid Claw survived the encounter, and after many years, the Tinker Rat found another opportunity to create a newer and better Doom Sphere. Heading towards the dwarf hold of Karak Angul, Ikid Claw stole his arch nemesis, Klarak Bronze Hammer's newest and most improved metal alloy called Barazung. With this improved metal, Ikid's latest doom sphere was sure to be magnificently destructive beyond imagination. Yet due to the valiant efforts of Clarak Bronze Hammer and the dwarves of Karak Ankul, the infamous doom sphere had once again been destroyed. In the final moments of that pivotal event, Igard Claw survived, and so long as he lives, the very fate of this world will forever be threatened by this half-mad Tinkerat. Now for his character. Mad! Mad! You squeak say I am mad mad? <laughs> yes, yes, only mad mad would make bring the doom sphere. Wicked Claw is tall and white furred, always a sign of distinction and power amongst the Skaven. Like all members of Clan Scryer, he constantly tinkers and experiments with new weapons and devices, delighting in anything which brings harm to his foes. Latest amongst his many inventions is the Doom Wheel, a terrifying engine of destruction which has smashed its way through the serried ranks of dwarves orc and human regiments with brutal precision. Igid's face and arm were badly burned in a failed experiment long ago. He has constructed an intricate mask to cover his mutilated and hairless skull and a cunningly made skeletal claw of iron, crystal and brass to give strength to his withered arm. The claw contains several of his more successful inventions, including a small warp fire projector. Naked Claw also bears Storm Demon, a hellish weapon he created in his own warpstone forges deep in the Undercity. Like many warlock engineers, 
Ickard Claw is a mad tinker rat, obsessed with the pursuit of technology. Yet unlike other warlock engineers, his madness and obsession has the potential to obliterate the entire world with a single push of a button. So committed is the chief warlock to prove his superiority to the world that he would go to any length to achieve his goals. One of his greatest goals is to create a weapon the likes of which would uplift the chief warlock's name beyond even Master Morskitar's own fame. In all practicality, the chief warlock is mad. So obsessed with his science and his technology, he didn't care what happened to the Under Empire so long as he could boast about unleashing the most destructive force ever known to rat kind. The Claw would ruin all of Skavendom just so he could measure the power of his creation for all to bear and see. And to finish this up, two more quotes from the mighty Eckerd Claw. Yes, yes! The essence of the warp stone feeds my machine. To create, one must must destroy. To destroy, one must must create. This will will be great best invention. Make force all Skaven bow grovel. Destroy kill all enemies. And I wouldn't kill me, Sankwal. Don't think you can make the Doom Sphere work without me. If it has too little warp stone, the machinery will be ruined and too much. The end. But remember, if you don't like and subscribe, I will find you and eat you alive.